Some guys are Kenworth fans and some guys are Peterbilt fans. And honestly, I've always been torn between the two. But I started out with Kenworth and it was the big fiberglass hoods that caught my attention. In 1956, Kenworth came out with the first 900 series conventional. Now, they changed it and called it the 900 series because it was the first Kenworth to have a tilting fiberglass hood. But in 1965, Kenworth introduced the first W900A and it had a huge hood. The hood was longer, it was wider, and it was meant to accommodate the big capacity rads and the great big engines like the KTA and the 3408. And Kenworth stuck with that model for the next 17 years, making slight variations and adjustments through the years. But basically they never varied from that W900A style and it sold like hotcakes. In 1976, Kenworth brought out the high bunk W900A and offered the VIT interior. Both were uh, options on the 900A, but they sold like hotcakes. And the Kenworth W900 became the king of the road, bar none. It was the best truck money could buy. They also began offering the eight bag air ride suspension for the later W900As, smoothest riding truck on the interstate. If the W900A had any flaw at all, it was the fact that the thing had a, a huge turning radius. It didn't corner very well, but nobody really cared. The drivers just adjusted for it. Nobody didn't buy the truck just because it turned like a, an ocean liner. However, by 1982, Kenworth began to worry about fuel consumption. They'd survived the oil embargoes of the 1970s, and Kenworth decided they had to concentrate on making trucks that got better fuel mileage. So in 1982, they discontinued the 900A and brought in the W900B. The 900B had a shorter hood. In fact, it was 10 inches shorter, but it still had big engine compartment capacity. And the truck industry was moving away from the big V8 diesels and moving towards the more powerful six cylinder diesels that they'd managed to refine. So the W900B still had the capacity for the, the 3406 or the big Cummins motors or the Detroit motors, but the hood was 10 inches shorter and it turned better, but everybody wasn't really particularly happy with the W900B. They moaned the loss of the big hood, all sorts of Kenworth fans wrote into Kenworth and complained about the W900B. I was one of them, but I bought one anyway. By 1990, Kenworth had realized that they might have made a bit of a mistake with the shorter hood W900B. They'd lost all sorts of customers, their long hood customers, over to Peterbilt who bought long hood 359s. So in 1990, Kenworth decided to reintroduce the long hood and they were going to call it the w 900 L, the L standing for long. There was a lot of fanfare with Kenworth bringing in the long hood truck again. In fact, it was supposed to be the feature truck in the new James Bond film that was out and coming called License to Kill. And the film was supposed to feature the new long hood W900 Elk trucks. But production began before Kenworth could catch up with the hoods. So truly, in the movie, those were W900Bs, but painted with the James Bond special paint scheme to hide the fact that it was the shorter hood. Kenworth did eventually come out later in 1990 with the true long hood model, and they did the James Bond paint edition, and those trucks became collector's items. But one thing was evident when you looked at the James Bond paint scheme was the fact that Kenworth had, was trying to hide something that they had not announced to the public about the new 900 long hood. The hood actually sloped down instead of coming out and up a wee bit like the W900A. Kenworth explained this drop in the hood as an attempt to improve the aerodynamics of the truck, again, to increase fuel efficiency. But diehard Kenworth fans noticed the slope down, weren't very happy about it. All sorts of people rode into Kenworth and complained about the new drop hood. I was one of them but I bought one anyways. Had Kenworth actually duplicated the W900A hood and brought it back in 1990, today the original W900As wouldn't be such collector's item. It was the fact that they changed the hood that made the old truck so collectible 
and, and dealers and buyers love the old hoods. In 1998, Kenworth introduced the 86 inch Studio Sleeper. Up until this point, truck drivers that were out on the road for long periods of time, if they wanted a bigger bunk, they had to go to a custom manufacturer. And these bunks would be built and hung on the truck aftermarket. Some of those custom bunks weren't the best quality built. The Studio Sleeper came directly out of the factory. There were no warranty issues with it. It was well constructed and it was lighter than some of the customs factory bunks. It wasn't a big drag on the gross weight of the truck. So drivers really loved the Studio Sleeper. And again, it sold like hotcakes. Up until 2001, the W900 was available with any engine package. But in 2001, Dilmer bought Detroit Diesel. Dilmer also owned Freightliner. So all of a sudden, the competition was making the motors and Kenworth quit offering Detroit diesels in their trucks in 2001. They also in that year signed a long-term agreement contract with Cummins diesels. In 2010, Caterpillar dropped out of the truck engine market, but coincidentally, that was the same year that Packar was ready to introduce the Packard MX-13 motor, which would replace the Caterpillar motor, and they were offered both the Kenworths and the Peets. In 2006, Kenworth began installing curved windshields into their W900 series. Nobody liked the windshields. Kenworth said it was to improve aerodynamics and fuel efficiency, but truly what I think it was, was a chance for Kenworth to be the only one to be able to sell windshields to W900 owners. They had to buy the curved glass from factory dealers. They couldn't install flat glass of their own the way they could in the older models. In the early 2020s, Kenworth was considering dropping the W900 models altogether from their lineup. And they wanted to replace it with a more fuel efficient 990 Kenworth. But there was so much screaming from the KW owners that love their W9s that Kenworth backed off on their plan and they still produce the Kenworth W900L today. When I was researching to do this video on the W900s, I came across a YouTube video from Jack's Chrome Shop about the W900 Kenworth. So I thought I'd watch it. Halfway through the video, in the video appears a picture of my truck, a picture I had taken myself that Jack's Chrome Shop had stolen off Kathy's website. Not only had they stolen the picture, they had labeled that truck a W900B. I owned that truck. I bought it new. It was a W900L, not a B. So at the end of the day, it just goes to show that Jack's Chrome Shop don't know Jack. Stay safe. Keep the rubber side down. Watch for those old long hood trucks. They're still the nicest looking trucks on the road, in my opinion. Take care. Keep the rubber side down. I'll see you on the backhaul.